Hi, this is Kevin Williams, Product Manager with JDSU Test and Measurement. Last time I provided an overview for testing AC voltage with the JDSU HST3000. This session I'll overview testing DC voltage. Thank you for joining. If you recall from last time, AC and DC voltage are under number 1, DVOM, which is located on the copper measurement screen. Scroll with the up and down keys and press the OK button or just press the number 1 on the keypad dialer. Now, just like with AC volts, press the F4 key to move from taking snapshot measurements to taking measurements in the continuous fashion. Near the top of the screen, look for the word Up Down Changes Test. If you press the down arrow, you'll see the label on the tops change from measuring AC voltage, tip to ring, to DC voltage, tip to ring. You can also move through any of the tests in the digital volt ohmmeter, including DC voltage, by pressing the F1 soft key located right under the word display at the bottom left hand side of the screen. Then either scroll to the test with the arrow key and press OK, or just press the number on the left hand side associated with the test, in this case the number 3 for DC volts. Once you're in DC voltage, you'll notice that the screen presentation is identical to the AC voltage test and it operates identically as well, in that the left and right arrow keys change the lead combination that you're testing. Measurements for DC battery are made primarily after DC battery has been removed. In other words, you're looking for DC battery where no DC battery should exist by measuring the field side of the cable pair with the central office or exchange removed. Now if it was a working pair and you'd want to have the battery removed, you could do so by calling the CO or exchange technician and asking them to drop battery before making the measurement. Some companies also provide a drop battery number, which you might do with your butt set. You can also do this with the HST instead of your bet set by selecting the F1 button underneath the word display. The item at the top of the list here, number one, is POTS dialer. Scroll up to number one with the arrow keys and press OK or just press the number one. The screen that pops up has a place where you can key in the drop battery number with the keypad dialer. Then you can take your measurement. Now here's a practical application for testing DC voltage. Typically I'd want to see no more than about 3 volts tip to ring, tip to ground, and ring to ground. If I have more than that, most likely I have a cross battery condition. But I'll give you a real world application. Let's say I'm measuring a cable pair and I suspect the pair is crossed meaning the tip and ring conductor is making resistive contact with the ring conductor of another pair, which carries DC battery. But let's say it's a swinging cross, meaning it's not there all the time, it comes and goes. If you recall from the testing session on AC volts, there is a lowest and highest measurement on the bottom of the screen that captures the lowest and highest measurement that the HST sees. After I connect my tip and ring leads, I might even put my HST down, let's say if I have to go back to the truck. As long as the DC voltmeter is set to take measurements in the continuous fashion, any DC that comes across the pair would be captured under the lowest and highest measurement. Now before we close, I'll show you an often overlooked item, but one that if you understand will help you save time when you're troubleshooting things like cross battery. That is the termination impedance. It is also important because I often see cases in the field where two different test sets measuring the same cable pair may show significantly different results for things like cross battery. Oftentimes you'll find that the two test sets have different termination impedance settings. At the bottom of the screen, right above the F2 button, you'll find the word actions. Go ahead and press the F2 button once. There are two settings in particular that I now want to go over with. Number one, one mega ohm term, and number two, one kilo ohm term. Typically, you'll want to keep your default setting at the one mega ohm setting. Here's why. I measure DC on a cable pair to determine if it's crossed with another pair that has DC battery connected to it. If my pair is crossed, I'll find that the ring conductor of some other pair is touching the tip or ring conductor of my pair through some form of resistance. I also know that if I'm measuring for cross battery, the battery from a dial tone telephone service would measure 52 volts. Now let me draw that as a simple series circuit with a resistor in it. 
with the resistor as the fault. Now let's connect my meter in series to measure the fault. When I do that, I am actually just putting another resistor in series. Next, to keep my example simple, I'll change the battery from 52 volts to 10 volts. So for our example, our battery will be 10 volts instead of 52 volts. Now whenever I measure voltage drop, which is just the amount the total voltage decreases across each of the resistors in a series circuit, whatever I measure across the first resistor in series plus what I measure across the second resistor, which in this case is my HST3000, must equal the total applied battery, which is 10 volts. So now let's give the resistors values of 5 ohms each. If the resistor values are equal at 5 ohms each, does it make sense that whatever voltage drop I read across the first resistor would be the same as I read across the second resistor? Yes, that's exactly how it works. If the values of the resistors are the same, then the voltage drop across each of them would also be the same and if when added together they must equal the total applied battery of 10 volts, then the only two values that work for the measured voltage drop are 5 volts across resistor 1 and 5 volts across resistor 2, which is my HST3000. So what happens if I change the values of the resistors so they are different from one another? If I leave the first resistor, which represents the fault, at 5 ohms and I change the second resistor or the HST3000's impedance setting to 100,000 ohms, the rule still remains the same. Whatever voltage drop I measure across the first resistor plus whatever voltage drop I measure across the second resistor must equal the total applied battery value of 10 volts. But just as the resistance of the fault at 5 ohms is now different from the HST's termination impedance of 100,000 ohms, the voltage drop I measure across each of them will also be different. I'll see most of the voltage drop occur across the higher value and almost nothing across the lower value. The DC voltage reading across my HST will be almost 10 volts. I have 9.995 volts here in this case. And almost nothing, 0 0.005 volts across the fault. Okay, let's take that a step further. Let's keep my HST's impedance setting at 100,000 ohms, but now let's change the fault to also be 100,000 ohms. Will that make a difference in my measurement? Yes, it will. Remember that the total voltage drops must add up to the total applied battery of 10 volts. So since the fault and my HST have equal values of 100,000 ohms, then the only two values for the voltage drops, since they are both the same, is 5 volts. So the DC volts measurement will also be 5 volts. Now I'll extend the example just a little further, and you should start to see the importance of the termination impedance setting on the HST. I'll leave my HST at the 100,000 ohm setting but change the fault to 1 million ohms, which would represent a high resistance fault. Now remember that I said you will see more of the voltage drop across the higher resistance. In this case, the fault is 10 times that of the HST. The result when you take a reading is that you will see almost none of the voltage drop across the HST3000, which is where you'd most like to see it. So that's a problem. A measurement of 1 volt on the HST DC does not look like a battery cross to me. But we already know that this pair has cross battery condition, so let's move on. Now finally, let's change the HST to 1 million ohms, or 1 mega ohm, the same as the fault. If you were to have used the 1 mega ohm setting, you would have measured 5 volts, which would indicate cross battery. Therefore, I recommend that you set the HST at the 1 mega ohm setting as your standard setting for the impedance setting to get a more accurate reading. Again, for your volts DC measurement, we recommend that you should see no more than about 3 volts DC dip to ring, tip to ground, and ring to ground. Now, if you go back to the example I started out with and put my battery back where it should be at 52 volts, 
you'll find that all the same rules still apply. If you use the 1 mega ohm termination impedance setting, you can expect to see a more accurate reading to find the cross battery. Here we see 26 volts. Well, that ends this session talking about testing DC volts. Thank you for your time.